Lives in football spanning 50 years. In 2022, an honor they never thought they'd live to see. I wouldn't even, wouldn't even entertain the thought of it. I just enjoyed playing. What an honor. I mean, it's um, the biggest award you can get in my profession. Five and a half million people have played and coached college football. Toledo legends Chuck Ely and Gary Pinkle join an exclusive club, the Hall of Fame. A box in my front door. So I found out a box is in the front door of my house from the outside. So my wife and I pull up, I open it up. There was an envelope and there was a card on top of that. And the card on top of that basically said, welcome to the Hall of Fame. And I just start crying. Shared excitement for Ely, an unparalleled winner, also unparalleled relief. 35 wins, no losses, no ties as Toledo's quarterback and leader from 1969 to 1971. He was scantily recruited, determined to play quarterback despite racial attitudes. His impact lives on here and in Canada, but this is closure. I think the, probably the feeling I got when, when Mike finally, you know, called me and told me was, wow, this is over, this battle. You know, you've gone back and forth, back and forth, and all the reasons for not being there. I was very confident in what had happened because nobody else had done what I had done. Voting technicalities kept Ely out. He was a first-team football news All-American in 71, except the Hall didn't recognize football news as a selector. Those who know his talent wouldn't be kept silent while he was kept out. Tony uh, Dungy, he reached out before it was done, and, and you know, and I think, I was like, whoa. I mean, he watched me play when he was in high school. Chuck Ely's a hero and asked some people, which that's exactly right. I'm just going, what, what are we talking about here? Um, and at the end of the day, so overdue. Not too many people have won more games than him, just starting quarterback that's ever played. What's clear now was not in 1971. We were going to go to the Tangerine Bowl. I, like, I don't think we know what we've done here. And in, in a concept of uh, we were at 33, 34 straight, and, and we looked at, up at the possibility of being totally undefeated. And, and, and it, it dawned on me, you know, where we had come from and what we had done. And I was sort of taken back by it because the first time I really thought about it, you know, and it was kind of like, whoa. Now everybody knows. If it happened 30 years ago, whenever it should have happened, I would have gone into what I used to call black hole. My name kept coming up and it kept coming up. Chuck Ely, 1970 and 71. So now my kids know everything about it. My grandkids are knowing everything about it. And they know Gary Pinkle. Chuck son Damon played during the most successful coaching tenure at UT. 73 wins in 10 years, the most in program history. I put our Don James program in. I learned from him. I put that in right away. You know, we, I didn't sit around and ask people what they wanted to do. This is how we're going to teach. This is how we're going to recruit. Use your personality. Eight winning seasons, a MAC title, and a ranked run to the Las Vegas Bowl in 1995, ending in history. We have seen a first here tonight. Overtime. Tate, right side, touchdown, and the Rockets have finished this 1995 season undefeated. With 118 wins at Mizzou, Pinkle joins Bear Bryant and Steve Spurrier as the only Hall of Famers to lead two programs in wins. But there's this, this thing that worked at Kent State, this thing at, in Seattle. Now we're dropping it in Toledo, Ohio. And guess what? It worked there too. And so why do you, why don't, why am I telling you this? I'm talking to mom and dad and this kid. Because what we do works. And guess what? It's going to work in Missouri. And that really helped us, that, that, you know, that storyline, getting it out there. Toledo is very much a part of our success. A shared induction class, shared school, and shared success. Their careers and legacies are as much about others as themselves. You don't think about these things until after you stop playing and people will come up to you. What you meant to different people who came to those games, Christine Brennan. She uh, talks very highly about how her family and came to the games and how she never thought we were going to lose. And I've had people come and talk to me that they got engaged on the banks of the stadium there because of what had happened in the game. They were so happy. All the guys that coached for me and all of those players and all those people that were in the perimeter helping my kids graduate from college, that's ultimately what this thing means to me. This thing is passed out around everybody. With Toledo's College Football Hall of Famers, Joel Sebastianelli, 
BCSN.